<laughs> yeah. You know what? Oh. Hey, I, I'm two weeks free of social media now. Oh, how's know, your social you media fast going? I, I got rid of Instagram. I got rid of Facebook. Um, I do still have the My Figures Instagram on my phone to yeah. do things periodically for business. But it's uh, I was listening to this book on, it was just a psychology book, and it's talking about how you know, mental fatigue is so much higher. People are always tired. But when you break it down and realize that the second I get home, I've got the TV on and not only is the TV on, but I'm holding my, my phone right here scrolling while I'm watching TV and your brain can only exert. Yeah. We we have so much ADD. You're like, Oh, I'm bored of this. And now I'm on my phone scrolling. And exactly. So I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say I've had some crazy life changing experience where I have all this energy now. No, I, I don't really feel any different from an energy standpoint. What I have noticed though, is I am spending a lot more time with my son. I'm, oh, I'm seeing good. him way more when he's standing in front of me with a toy. Whereas before I'm just sitting here scrolling, I'm mm, noticing those little things. And so I do feel a, a lot better as a father. I do feel like I'm, I'm spending more quality time with Marie. And so in that sense, yes, That's I'm, good. I'm glad that I got rid of it. And I'm going to continue at least through the end of the year. It's one of my goals. That's good. Yeah. For me with social media, like I've always pretty much looked at it only as how can I use it for business? How can I use it for business? Jill was super excited when Facebook came out, like however many years, 12, 13 years ago for the family aspect and connecting with family and sharing pictures. Cause before that time people were using like blog spot and you were, you had like a family blog and you put your pictures there and then people would go to your family blog and then Facebook really took that over. But but even even then, I mean, it's so easy to find yourself just mindlessly going down a rabbit hole and scrolling and scrolling. And so, so yeah, at some point, I, I just pretty much, I, I very rarely look at it on my phone. I've got the apps on my phone, but really the only the only social media app I really do is, is YouTube. And it's almost always for a video about business or some aspect of business or a podcast about business. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean... I was one of those that kind of kept that excuse of, oh, I, I only have social media so I can keep up with my family and friends and keep them updated on what I'm doing in my life. Yeah. And when I really thought about that and broke that down, I was like, how disingenuous is that? Like it, in all reality, like if I really want my mom to know about my life, I should give her a call and have a conversation with her. I yeah. should send her a picture of my sons that was meant just for her. Right. I I've, have a very close family friend, my godmother in, in California. And I've always used the excuse of, oh, I'd send her a Facebook post on her birthday and I post a picture of Jack so she knows what we're up to. But just last week, I realized, you know, what? I'm not seeing her post. I'm off social media. This is weird. I sent her a video of our new house and Jack playing with Thomas on a toy that she sent us. And we had this long conversation because it was much more personal. So I think your relationships that actually matter will be a lot stronger if you get off social media and those that you don't really give a shit about will continue to not really matter to you anyway. So I, I think if you're struggling with relationships, you feel like you don't have strong friends or strong relationships. I think getting off social media will probably help. You know, what's interesting. I feel like the one app out there and I'm pretty sure my kid, this is how the younger generation are operating. Now the one social media app out there that is really, that is good and, and almost exclusively used with, with a uh, family, I, I guess maybe if you're a teenager, this might be a little bit uh, different, but even, even our kids like his Snapchat, like we're in the grand Canyon, we're doing this, <laughs> we're doing that. We're at Disney world or wherever, like we're going to share stuff on Snapchat. We have like a little family group and we share little snaps in there with uh, the family group, or you have really good friends. And, and I know it's a little bit uh, different, but, but it's, it, it is even like friends. Like if you're, you know, in your, in your 20, you 20, 22, 23, if you're in your teenage years, like everybody is Snapchat, it seems like, because it is much more intimate and yeah. connected and it disappears after a little bit. So it seems like that's the actual app nowadays that if you really were trying to share with family, but you're right, nothing beats a one-on-one phone call. Uh, geez, the, we can do video calls now. Like that was mind blowing to <laughs> think that you could yeah. do that 20, 25 years ago, even a decade ago. They were asking, oh, do you think we'll ever be able to do that? And and now we just take it for granted. And my son's going to be in Brazil in a, in a few weeks, and I'll be able to video chat with him. Just uh, amazing, that technology. But, yeah, we don't use it the way it should be used for family. Yeah, I, I mean, I did keep Snapchat. It's funny that you say that because 
You know, a lot of people, Jill, when you said Snapchat, Jillian, like, oh, give me a break. Because in all reality, in Snapchat. Well, we're old. I'm old, you know. I'm a, Leo I'm and I, did you know we Snapchat back and forth? When we're doing something cool, I'll send them a Snapchat. But I don't know if you knew this, though. You can go down these same rabbit holes. Snapchat has all these crazy stories. I, I did. And I just never go. That. But <laughs> it, exactly. I've committed to And not. they're good. They are. Like, you'll be down a <laughs> rabbit hole for days. Oh, shit. Look at yeah. that. That's fascinating. That oddly satisfying thing where what? they, like, cut soap. It's like, why am I watching this? <laughs> Give me a break. I think actually lately, at least like not the younger ones or like the older generation, but my generation, we're way more for Instagram stories. Ah, uh, Jillian's telling us the young generation <laughs> is right now transitioning to stories on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Okay, that that is true because I did a post the other like last month or something. My last post before I got rid of it and. My friends were like, why are you posted? Just put it on your story. I'm like, well, I don't really know how. I'm, I'm out of the game on this. But I did do it with our My Figures <laughs> one, so I learned from a business standpoint. But, yeah, Snapchat, I think it's awesome, too, because if you're just using it to communicate with your friends, it, it's not insensitive. I think you can have awesome back and forth with Snapchat. And then it brings up memories. That's what I love about it. It's like two years ago on this date, this is a Snapchat that you sent out, and it kind of is, is a little journal. So I, I did keep that one for that purpose. Actually, and that's one thing that I like about uh, Facebook. And honestly, the only time I ever use Facebook, and I log into it every day, is to check our Facebook group. We've got a few thousand people in our funding partner community that are in that Facebook group. And so I'll go in there, and I have to make sure there's no fires, and no one's like, oh, why didn't so-and-so call me back? Or what's going on with this deal? I'm like, just... You know, just call Jillian. She's right there. She'll help you. But um, it will do the same thing of memories because Jill is really good at posting stuff for the family on her Facebook account. And so every day I'll log in and there's a new memory and it'll go back eight, ten. You'll start crapping your pants here because Jack is two years old. Is he two? Just about. He's going to be two in July. So so Jack's going to be two right in July. But all of a sudden, five years will go by and he'll be seven and then you'll get a memory uh, picture. Oh, this is Jack, th- you know, when he was three, when he was four. And you're like, hey, unbelievable how much he's changed. Or you were at that event or that family thing. Or maybe it was a football game or whatever it was. But uh, so I now take those and I, I, I screenshot those and I put them in a Google Drive folder. And I'm just racking up these. And then I'll share them like with all of our family in a text. Yeah. Which I, I actually really like Jill's. I, I enjoyed, I don't see them anymore. Like I said, I'm off of it. But I enjoyed Jill's posts because they were real. She talked about she is legit awesome. struggles and yeah. how things weren't just all peaches and roses and, and and fairy tales. Because that's one thing that I I hated when I started f- comparing my family to other families. But in all reality, certain families are posting this. But I know that they're actually really going through a very, very hard time. Yeah. And case in point, JoJo, our, one of our partners comes in rolls up in this awesome, awesome Corvette, like the, the wide body kit, everything you could do to it. Oh, I love that And he's Corvette. like, dude, you know what's funny is I rent this out. They, they have to pay me for a full day, but it's some influencer who doesn't even turn the car on, doesn't even know how to drive it, just gets in the car, has a bunch of pictures taken, and then posts them online saying, oh, I bought this new car with this commission and, and this and that. And it's like, it's just so fake. And I'm comparing oh my myself to things that aren't even real. And it's just... It's unnecessary. I, I, I didn't mean to. I know this wasn't even on our, our schedule, so I hate to go off on this tangent, but I just wanted to experience, you know, other people know about this freeing experience that I had. And, again, it, it comes down to it wasn't fatigue. It wasn't this. It wasn't that. It's, it's relationships. That's where I've seen the biggest difference by getting off of social media. Dude, that, that's what's crazy, though. Like, people want to live this fake, inauthentic life. And so you see this, right? You see this where, you know, this guy's whole business model is I've got these sexy cars and sometimes celebrities come, but more often than not, it's people who are trying to be influencers and they're like, oh, this is my sweet, sweet ride, guys. And, and like, if you've really... One of the coolest things ever in life, I think, is to get to a point where I don't give a shit what anybody thinks. I don't have to prove myself to anybody because my goals and what I want to do are bigger than whatever their expectations are. So I don't need to post, you know, pictures of this, that, and the other. If it can help a business, if it can, you know, you know, we got that two comma club X award that's over there. We need to get a picture of that just because it's a, 
it means a lot to a lot of people, and there's a lot of people that helped us uh, to get that, and we've got a great team. And so, but but people literally just want to, you know, say they've achieved something when they haven't, and it's okay to be patient. It's okay to realize it's part of it. It's a journey. It's a struggle that you're going to get there, and uh, and and just go through that, and then understand that you don't have to you know, do this fake stuff. You can just be yourself, be authentic. And that's what, when people have actually achieved real success, they don't have to tell you about it. And you'll always find someone who's actually successful because they'll be asking you the questions. And when you're young and dumb, and Alex Ramosi was talking about this the other day, he would just sit and talk about himself. And I remember doing that in my 20s, just sitting there talking about, shut up and ask somebody who's like way more successful than you. And what can we learn from them? And when you start to approach life that direction, it's a much better way to live, I think. Yeah, it, it is kind of interesting how you you see these accounts of people that have achieved such, such high levels of success, whether it's, you know, professional athletes or Elon Musk, whoever it is, all of a sudden, once they've achieved that high level of success, they have no problem posting about their shitty living circumstances or their shitty car or this or that. All of a sudden, they're totally fine to talk about it. But when people are actually living it, they're so scared and self-conscious of it. It's like, it, it just doesn't make any sense. But... Um, I'm, I'm glad to be freed of it regardless. So you're free, Ty. I'm free. You're free.